What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Nintendo Land. I am so glad to be here with you guys again for another video this week. It's so awesome having the week off so I can do these. And welcome back to Mario Week. And as we continue Mario Week this Wednesday, we are going to look at enemies that can be captured in potentially Super Mario Odyssey 2. We know Mario Odyssey's capture mechanic cannot go with one game and done. I'm pretty sure that they're either going to include some DLC in the first game or have that Super Mario Odyssey sequel. So we're going to be looking at enemies that can can be potentially captured and that we can use in an upcoming Mario Odyssey. So pretty much I'm doing this by series instead of just top 10. And I'm doing this through the first Mario Brothers games, Mario Brothers 1 through 3 and Super Mario World. And we're looking at the possible enemies that could happen there. And if this video gets enough likes and enough views, we'll continue the series on with future Mario games down the road. But I need you guys to like the video. I need you guys to comment and let me know how you feel. Let me know some enemies that I may have missed because I'm sure I'm going to miss some and just give me a general impression that you guys enjoyed this video before we get started guys if you are new to the channel feel free to subscribe and if you subscribed right now make sure you hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the posts that i post this week and in the future so thank you guys for tuning in and without further ado let's get started Well, first off, let's look at Super Mario Bros. 1, and there's three enemies that I want to mention from here. The first one being the Buzzy Beetle. The Buzzy Beetle has been going on throughout the Mario franchise for a while. It's not a very, you know, unique enemy. It's just this little beetle that walks up walls on ceilings, and they have different variants. You can have the spiky or the spiny and stuff like that. So it's not really a big enemy that needs to be included, but I think it's a cool one that could add to maybe a storyline. I think that's what Mario Odyssey 2 needs more of is a storyline. So maybe you are a Buzzy Beetle and part of this clan and you have to follow the line of Buzzy Beetles and if you mess up they know that you're not a real one and all this stuff. So that would be really cool to add into the game. Then we have the Bill Blaster. I know this is a weird one, but hear me out. So I know in Mario Odyssey 1 you could turn into a Bullet Bill, but what if you could turn into the Blaster itself and fire multiple Bullet Bills maybe at a giant boss or maybe at some type of enemy that you can't just take down with one Bullet Bill? Or maybe you can fire Bullet Bill and then be that Bullet Bill. So maybe they can, you know, expand that a little bit more because there are a lot of blasters in the Super Mario Bros. franchise and I think that they can continue to add from that point on. Now one thing we didn't have in Super Mario Odyssey which was weird was one of the main types of enemies being the blooper, the main underwater enemy. Yes, we had the Gushin, but he was really only movable on the water surface or above. And yes, we had the Cheap Cheap, but he kind of moved very slow in the water. We could have had the blooper, which could actually move through the water very quickly, maybe as like a torpedo type of thing, and the maneuverability underwater would have been perfect. I would have loved to see that, you know, being able to control blooper, maybe you shoot out your little blooper children like you could in Mario Brothers 3, and that's just something I feel like should definitely be added in the next one. Moving on to Super Mario Brothers 2, we have a couple of enemies that I thought would be really cool. First off, we have the Ninji. So Ninji is this enemy that can jump really high, and I know we have enemies that can already do that in Mario Odyssey, and even enemies that can fly, but maybe they give him more abilities. Maybe you can actually act like a ninja, maybe you can wall cling and you know do flips and throw ninja stars and even jump really high or disappear and stuff. And I think the Ninji would be a really cool enemy, and we've seen him kind of come back a little bit back and forth uh, throughout the Mario franchise. Believe it or not, the Pokey is another enemy that really hasn't shown up in the Super Mario Odyssey franchise. So pretty much, the Pokey can stack up lots of these little spike balls and create this tower where you can maybe reach higher areas, or maybe you can knock down all of the different segments of the Pokey and just be this one segment that can roll on the ground or roll under tight spaces, and then you could fall over on enemies and stuff like that, maybe create bridges. Um, there's a lot of opportunities and stuff that you can do with a Pokey. So the Bomb Om is a really cool enemy in the Super Mario franchise, and just like the Bullet Bill, it can explode on contact and Mario can jump right out. So the Bullet Bill uh, works as simply as it's shot out of a cannon, Mario can capture it and drive it to wherever he needs to go, or fly it to wherever he needs to go. With the Bomb Om could be the same way, once a Bomb Om shoots out of its cannon, Mario can then attach to it and detonate whenever he wants or go to any wall he wants and then blow it up. And he can pretty much control it that way. It's not going to be a big change for Super Mario Odyssey, but it is going to be a cool one that should be added. And then we have Shy Guy. Now, this one I really don't know what to do with, but you got to have Shy Guy. I mean, Shy Guy has been around 
forever as playable characters and just as all kind of things, you gotta have Shy Guy in there somehow. And Shy Guys do different things throughout Mario games, especially whether it's Paper Mario or the Mario Luigi series. It just depends on really where the storyline goes. Maybe this specific task, Shy Guys are always known to be that, you know, default enemy that's doing things, whether they're flying a ship, whether they're, you know, doing mining or something. And they're always doing something. And maybe you can be one to, you know, join the crowd. I know in Paper Mario Sticker Star, they were all lined up to get on this roller coaster. Maybe you can join that. Maybe you can, like like I said with the Buzzy Beetle, join a group of Shy Guys and uh, be undercover or something like that. Like I said, it really just depends on where they go story-wise this time around. Coming in with Super Mario Bros. 3, now we have the Boo. Now, this is a weird debate here because Mario Galaxy actually already technically had this with the Boo Mushroom power-up, which allowed Mario to turn into a Boo. He had the hat, the mustache, and everything. So it was kind of weird that this just wasn't transferred straight over to Super Mario Odyssey. Now, this would work the exact same way. You would turn into a Boo, you would capture him, and you would literally just be able to go invisible, be able to float, stuff like that. Not a big one there, but I feel like that was weird that it didn't show up in Super Mario Odyssey. So Patooies are really cool enemies in Super Mario Bros. 3, and what they can do are they're Piranha Plants that shoot out spike balls, and we can see this from Piranha Plant in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's a really cool move, probably his best move. So this would be really cool to transfer over to Super Mario Odyssey. Yes, Mario can already capture a Piranha Plant and turn into the Poison Spitting Piranha Plant, but why not one that shoots spike balls? Now, I'm sure that there's also tons of other Piranha Plants that he can turn into. I mean, Palutena or Greedy tells us this, and Super Smash Brothers literally lists them all. So this is really up to Nintendo what type of Piranha Plant they want to use, but I think a Patooie would be really cool. Then we have Rocky Wrench. Rocky Wrench is a really cool Mounty Mole that is able to go underground, pop up, and throw wrenches at its enemies. Now, I didn't know which one to add here, the Rocky Wrench or the Mounty Mole. Um, either one would be really cool. Maybe you could go underground in underground segments, um, dig into dirt, stuff like that. And that would be really cool. Throwing wrenches at enemies and stuff, that would be a really cool addition. Because there's lots of levels that really don't, you know deal with underground as much. Yes, you go into the underground levels as Mario, but how cool would it be to traverse through the dirt with a Monty Mole? I think it would be pretty sweet. Spike is another one of my favorite enemies throughout the Mario franchise. I absolutely adore this character. He's so cool because there's so many different variants. There's snowball ones, there's, you know, regular spike ball ones, there's big ones, there's small ones. And there's ones with like ski masks, there's all kind of cool ones. And Spike is actually kind of leveled up as an enemy and became kind of like this main group of enemies in the Mario franchise. He's even playable characters in certain games like Mario Tennis and other throw-off Mario games. But he's a really cool character and he has lots of different things that he can toss and stuff. And maybe Mario can just turn into him and throw Spike balls, throw, you know, pillars, all kind of stuff that he throws within his games. And I think he would actually be one of the coolest transformations in the game. Moving on to our last category being Super Mario World, we have the Thwomp. Now this one is another weird one that I cannot wrap my mind around how it didn't appear in Super Mario Odyssey. This is one of the main enemies in the Mario franchise and it wouldn't have really been hard to incorporate. Have Mario capture it and he could drop down, maybe move left and right super quick and smash things. I don't know, this is just one that doesn't need much explanation, it just needs to be in Super Mario Odyssey as a transformation. Mecha Coopers was used a little bit in Super Mario World, but they appear more and more as the games continue to progress. We have Super Mario Galaxy where they appeared a couple of times, and these are little cool enemies that you could have maybe Mario walk around, breathe fire, and do some other things, maybe like in a factory setting type of world or something like that. Nothing big, but I feel like this is a type of enemy that maybe they could add some things to and do some cool things with. And last but not least, we have the Fuzzy. The Fuzzies are another one of those enemies that aren't super important, but they do play a crucial role in certain Mario games. They move along this track in a steady order, and maybe you can join once again, like you can go undercover and join the other Fuzzies by going along the track and maybe getting to a certain area, but you have to go throughout that track in order to get there. Like I said, the Fuzzies don't really play a primary role, but they do have lots of appearances in many Mario games throughout the years. They are kind of an enemy that stuck with the franchise through the many years. And that is all the time we have for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and if you guys enjoyed the video, we will continue on with the next part of the series, being the next couple of Mario games. It'll probably go on for a while since there's so many Mario enemies, but if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below, and let me know what games I should cover next. Should we just go straight to the 3D games, like 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy, and stuff like that, or should we cover some more of the 2D games and stuff? But let me know in the comments, guys, and thank you for tuning in, and I will see you guys on the next one tomorrow. See you guys.